Okay. So, hello everyone. Um, this is the last presentation, as Andrea said. And so I'll be talking about uh, very high resolution WARF simulations again. Um, now the main difference is that these are not the Kona simulations that uh, Rice Group has produced. These are simulations that we've done at the University of Toronto. And I've, mainly with my uh, former PhD advisor, Dick Peltier. I actually work for a company, Aquanti, now in Waterloo. We do hydrological consulting, but I still do uh, climate projection and regional climate modeling. Um, so, uh, before, so I'll also talk about uh, convective extremes and extreme precipitation. But before that, I'll briefly touch on orographic precipitation, because the region that I'll be focusing on is Western Canada, which is strongly dominated by uh, orographic precipitation. And um, mo mo ma mainly for winter and fall precipitation. Um, then I'll look at uh, uh, precipitation extremes also in winter and then in summer. So in summer, especially in the Canadian prairies, they are dominated by convective precipitation. Um, but uh, both uh, orographic precipitation as well as convective precipitation, of course, benefit from very high resolution. That's why I include both of it. Um, and then at the end, I'll uh, get to the climate change signal in uh, convective precipitation. And there I'll be focusing on the prairies. Okay. So, but first, a little bit about the uh, model setup, the domain that we are looking at. Um, so, we use a, a telescoping setup with an outer domain that covers essentially all of North America and a lot of the uh, North Pacific at 30 kilometer resolution, and then we zoom in over Western Canada at 10 kilometer first, and then there's an inner domain as well at uh, three kilometer resolution. And um, most of the simulations are forced by era interim reanalysis, um, and these are of course only for historical period. Uh, for the climate change projections, um, the simulations are forced by CESM, so by a free running GCM. And differences will be shown between uh, historical uh, CSM simulations and future CSM simulations. So there's no uh, pseudo-global warming scenario here. Um, this is ju uh, just forced by a free-running GCM. But most of the simulations I'll be showing are historical simulations that are forced by era interim. So um, this is a, a blob of Western Canada here. Um, and uh, this is the uh, three-kilometer domain that we're using. And uh, just to orient you a bit, so the, there are the um, the coast mountains here, um, which, which basically form the first rain barrier, and most of the precipitation falls here. Um, then there's the interior plateau. Um, this, this will be uh, quite important. And then there are the Rocky Mountains, which form the second rain bar barrier. And then there are the Canadian prairies here in Alberta. OK. And um, in the inner domain, the three kilometer domain, we don't use a convection scheme. Uh, outside of that, um, we use the GREL3 convection scheme, and we use Morrison microphysics. So now to the orographic precipitation. Um, this is uh, the PRISM observations, annual average precipitation over Western Canada at one kilometer resolution. So this is Vancouver Island, very high precipitation here, and then the coast mountains with very high precipitation, and then the interior plateau is in the rain shadow, as I've mentioned before. Um, and the, before precipitation picks up again over the Rocky Mountains, and then there are the prairies, which are in the lee of the Rocky Mountains and are very dry, so similar to the climate here. And um, so th these are the observations. Uh, when you look at model simulations, um, this is CESM, so very smooth. Right? So this is a typical GCM, basically. Right? Um, the interior plateau is almost completely missing uh, because the topography is so smooth. Um, and you can only basically see the, the broad uh, scheme of things. Um, the precipitation intensity here is way too low, and uh, there is more precipitation than in the rain shadow. So the rain shadow is not strong enough. The prairies are too wet. Um, if we go to Wharf at 30 kilometer resolution, uh, it already looks a lot better. We get a lot more intensity here at the, uh, at the coast mountains, but we still have too much rain over the interior plateau and over the prairies. Uh, at 10 kilometer resolution, it, it begins to look a bit better. You see the Rocky Mountain Trench, uh, a, lot, a lot more detail here. But we still have too much precipitation over the interior plateau. And unfortunately, this remains at three kilometer resolution as well. So we still don't resolve the uh, orographic precipitation uh, very well, even at three kilometer resolution. And spe so especially these rain shadows here are still causing problems. And uh, so this is uh, something I, I want to point out here. Um, now, if we line them up all uh, next to each other, so here's the three kilometers, and here is CSM. D 
these are all these are uh, 30 and 10 kilometer. These are all forced by error interim now. Um, yeah, you, you can see there is some improvement, especially over the GCM. But um, yeah, still a problem here. And if you subtract the uh, prism observations and look at the biases, it looks like this. So CSM does have significantly larger biases, um, but we still have, um, as you might have expected from the graphics before, um, a strong problem over these uh, areas that are in the rain shadow, uh, even at three kilometer resolution. And um, so for a lower resolution, we've also looked at different microphysics, and they all have this, seem to have the same problem. Um, so yeah, this is a uh, suboptimal. Um, but now I'll get to the uh, extreme value analysis. And we'll have other problems there, but um, this is a picture from the flood in Toronto, which was in, in summer 2013. Um, one thing I want to point out is that that will become relevant later. Um, these events are rare, so when we're analyzing extreme events, we need a lot of statistics. And uh, when you compare to observations, uh, that's often a problem. Um, this is the same layout as before, but now I'm showing the extreme precipitation and not uh, mean precipitation. So extreme precipitation is here defined as the day with the, for each grid point, the day with the highest precipitation in the year or the season that we are looking at. This is for the year. Um, and then the average for each year these days uh, over the entire simulation time period, which is 15 years here for the uh, WARF simulations. And so it looks very similar to the mean precipitation, uh, but it's much noisier, of course, because these are only for each grid point only averages of 15 points, right? Or 15 samples in time. Um, and unfortunately, I would like to show you the biases here, but we don't have uh, gridded observations for extremes, right? So um, yeah, no obs no gridded observations, and we have to use rain gauges basically. So we have to compare to rain gauges. Um, and these are all the rain gauges in Western Canada um, that are maintained by Environment Canada and are um, accessible as a homogenized data set. And so there are quite a few here. Um, the problem is, of course, if you only have a 15-year model simulation and we just compare a grid point to the closest station, we only have 15 years, 15 samples. You can't really do statistics with that. Um, so what we have to do is to pool these data somehow. But because the climate here is so heterogeneous, we cannot just pool all the data together. Uh, so we have to pool stations that are similar in, in some way in a climatological sense. And so I've applied a clustering algorithm to um, identify stations that have a similar precipitation characteristics. And uh, so same colors here are stations that have a similar seasonal cycle of precipitation. Um, and there is some geographic dependence, obviously, even though uh, in the clustering algorithm I didn't use the location. Um, they just turn out to be like that. Um, and for the purpose of this analysis, I'll just focus on two clusters, one at the coast and one in the Canadian prairies in Alberta. Um, and at the coast, the clusters tend to be relatively small because uh, the uh, characteristics are um, very variable. In the prairies, they tend to be much more homogeneous. Okay. Um, this is the uh, coast cluster, Pacific coast, and this is the prairies cluster, and this is a seasonal cycle of different precipitation variables, so January to um, December. And so these are, these are now the normals, not the extremes. And uh, green is total precipitation, um, blue is snow, and uh, the magenta color is convective precipitation. And uh, the dots are observations, so from the stations whereas the lines are the model simulation. And different line styles are different resolutions. So 30 kilometer is dashed, um, dotted is 10 kilometer, and the solid line is the uh, three kilometer simulation. And they actually all turn out to be relatively similar. We underestimate the precipitation at the coast um, compared to the observations. And this is what you've seen in the uh, plots before as well. Um, 